Hello everyone. Um, the idea for right now is just to present to you homework number two very briefly. Um, if you have any questions, just post them on the Twitch chat or on Discord and I will be happy to answer them right now. Otherwise, you can also leave a comment later and we, uh, well, I or Hugo or Ravi can answer it um, then. If you have a look at the homework page in the GEO 1015 website, you can find an overview of what you need to do. Um, it's a run of modeling assignment. At the end, you should end up with something that looks more or less like this. Um, if you have a look at the book chapter, we discuss a few different algorithms to do um, basic run of modeling. In the case of this assignment, you're supposed to do it with the LCP algorithm, least cost paths, um, which is described very briefly in the book chapter and much more extensively in the paper that is linked in the, in the page for the homework assignment. This is where the method comes from. So if you have any doubts, you can consult it directly there or you can ask questions. Um, in case you haven't had a chance to have a good look at it yet, um, basically with runoff modeling, you need to do two things. You need to compute first um, flow direction and then the flow accumulation. So let's say we have um, a DEM in a grid and we start from a, any given cell we want to find out which is the direction that uh, water flows from it. So imagine that it flows towards the, the steepest downward slope. So you just start from a cell, you look at all the neighbors and you find which one has the lowest elevation. And then you assume that the water that falls in that cell or that flows into that cell uh, flows out towards the lowest cell out of the neighbors. Um, if you do that for all the cells, you end up with something like this. And if you actually combine these flows together by assuming, let's say that uh, the water that falls here flows in this direction, then it flows in this direction, here, 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 and then leaves the map. Um, yeah, at the end, you end up with something that looks like this. So effectively, you have a, either a tree or multiple trees. Uh, that show you the way that water flows. And once you have something like that, you count for each um, cell, how many other cells are flowing uh, to that one. So for instance, in this one, you have the number three because you can see that the water from this cell, this cell, and this cell uh, flow there. Um, and yeah, you're supposed to do that for the entire map. At the end, you will have some cells where there's very little water flowing and some cells where there's a lot of water flowing, which you can assume that there will be streams or rivers whenever there's rainfall over there. Um, yeah, so there are different ways to achieve this sort of process. Um, if you just follow the most uh, naive approach, you will, end up, and you will end up with some problems, but the least cut paths uh, algorithm tries to avoid most of them by assuming that water can flow upwards uh, given certain circumstances. So basically you want to have a way to route um, water out of each uh, small hole. Otherwise even a very big river will end up uh, just in a small hole and never coming out of it. Um, but with least cost paths, you assume that water can flow upwards along the least uh, steeps upward slope more or less. Um, yeah, for the homework assignment, you're supposed to implement it, including both steps. Um, you can choose to do it in Python or in C++. It's really your choice. Um, I'm suggesting you to try with uh, C++ and there's a bit of extra help if you want to try it with C++. It's also good practice for the third homework assignment, which will be uh, in C++ only. So it's a nice opportunity. 
Um, if you decide to go with Python, the coding might be a bit easier, but you will likely have some performance issues, which will make your life harder in terms of debugging or uh, trying to optimize some things. Um, you are free to use any external modules you want for reading and writing files and for handling matrices. So these big rasters, you can imagine that they are sort of big matrices and you can use um, whatever you want for that. If you're using Python, a suggestion is to use Rasterio uh, for input and output, so uh, reading and writing files, and NumPy for handling matrices. If you're using C++, we are suggesting uh, Goodall for input and output and handling matrices directly in your own code, but you can do whatever you want. Um, yeah, also for things that are not directly related to the assignments or like debugging or visualizing your results, you can also use whatever you want. Um, to start, if you go to the GitLab repository of the course in the homework folder in the one with the mark with the number two, you can find two things. There's a main uh, C++ file and there's also a CMake file that you can use to compile your code um, with CLion or with any other software. Um, the only uh, sort of special thing that you can find here is that there are a few lines to look for the Google library in case you want to use it for input and output. Um, but otherwise, um, everything is pretty much uh, standard in the CMake file. If you look at the C++ file, uh, let me explain you a few things here. I given you a bit of help um, here directly in C++. If you want to use Python instead, you can use this maybe as a guide for um, a few of the steps that you need to do. So there's a um, structure raster that is meant to store and access uh, raster cells. You sort of initialize it by giving it um, the number of columns and the number of rows. Um, there are functions to fill in like entire lines or just uh, to fill everything with zeros and to access um, a given cell. There's also one more data structure called raster cell. And this is a sort of a pointer. So it's just a small thing that links to a cell in the other raster structure. This one just has like, what is the row number and the column number. It has uh, the elevation inside that uh, raster cell and the insertion order. We will see why this is important in a bit. Um, and yeah, there are some functions to easily write the value of the raster cell. Inside the main, in the C++ file, you have actually the biggest bits of help. So there's code to open a data set uh, using Goodall. Right now I just hard coded a path in my computer, but you can put whatever you want or you can make it fancier. Um, just read it from um, the standard input or read it from another file. It's up to you. Um, yeah, this is just to show you a bit how good it works so you can output what um, sort of file you're uh, reading, what's the size of the file, uh, the number of rows, number of columns, what is the location of the file and so on. Um, how many bands you have, the minimum and maximum value inside the file and here I'm actually um, using the raster data structure that was mentioned previously initializing it and using this function uh, reading it line by line and putting the contents of the raster file into the data structure as for the rest um, yeah, it's basically marked with a few to-dos here uh, for you to fill in. The Using this file is really optional. It's uh, there to help you, but if you prefer to do things in another way, you're free to do whatever you want.
so yeah going back to the um, homework page um, yeah, in addition to the C++ code you should download a, a 30 meter SRTM tile of a region that interests you um, yeah for that you can go to this website and you can click on any one of these tiles uh, I could encourage you to pick something interesting so something that has a bit of interesting topography in the example that you can see at the top of the course website I chose this region which has these um, sort of interesting ridges so you can imagine that water would um, sort of flow towards the middle of uh, the ridges so between two ridges and then flow sideways and then towards one of these big rivers so like the one that you see here uh, so you can go to like on Google Maps or something you can find a region that interests you and afterwards you can directly download it from this linked uh, website and use that for your assignment um, afterwards in the course page there's a bit of help uh, to understand the uh, the LCP method it's a bit tricky it's not the best sort of written paper but you can imagine it as good um, practice to try to read a scientific paper and try to implement what you see there um, so that the sort of the parts that are not entirely clear are explained here a bit um, and the trickiest part of implementing this method is that you need to have a um, special data structure which is a priority queue where everything is sorted by um, elevation and then by the order in which you inserted the cells um, for that we are giving you some recommendations as well so if you're using python you can use a uh, heap queue heap queue which is part of the python uh, standard library and if you're using c++ there's a priority queue which is also part of the c++ standard library um, yeah you can follow the links here if you want to look at the documentation and find out how this works um, yeah so a priority queue is basically a data structure where everything is kept uh, sorted so you can imagine it uh, as a sort of list that goes like this you have some elements with the lowest priority and some elements with the highest priority and you can insert um, an element with any value and whenever you do the insertion it's not like a standard um, um, queue or like a standard stack so not everything appears at the top or the bottom whenever you insert an element based on a given priority it will be put in the correct place according to the priority um, so you can imagine it as a sort of list but in order to get good performance actually what is used in practice are um, sort of binary trees most of the time or trees in general uh, but you don't need to worry too much about that if you just choose to use one of these um, uh, libraries that we're recommending so heapq with python or the priority queue with c++ mm, apart from that here are some tips so for the parts that are not entirely clear with the method uh, like which should be the outlets um, and yeah how to test your code a bit i mentioned that you uh, lcp tries to route water upwards along the least uh, upward slope sometimes it's not exactly true because things are uh, latitude longitude and you don't actually look at the slope you just look at the absolute elevation but that's a rough way to imagine it um, yeah for the marking you don't need to do any report for this assignment you just have to upload your code um, including the implementation of the least cost patch algorithm for the flow direction and then for the flow accumulation as well as a couple of rasters showing the flow direction and the flow accumulation for the region that you chose um, and this should be uploaded to a 
Dropbox link here. E yeah, that's basically the assignment. Um, I will stay a bit longer online. Um, so you can ask something on Discord or in Twitch. Otherwise, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening in. Um, yeah, so Leon, the values that you choose for the directions don't really matter. You just need to be consistent. So uh, it can they can be like one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, um, six, seven, eight, uh, or they can be like ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter as long as you are consistent and you use these values consistently inside your code. Okay, so if there are no further questions, I think I will leave the floor to Hugo for the homework one feedback. Um, yeah, just ask anything later in the Twitch chat or Discord uh, chat if you have any questions. This video will be available on Twitch for the next two weeks and I will upload it to YouTube as well so that it's available uh, for longer. Bye.